Now we're live. Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 Everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kirsten. Or good morning, good afternoon, whatever time zone you are in. Um, we are back, and we are back with a topic that I think um, it's very important for everyone that went through a coaching training or is tends to go or is looking for an accreditation or is taking the step of preparing for the CKA also because they have they come up in there also the core competences as we said also last time we want to make sure that we go through each core competency and at the same time after we're done with the icf core competency give importance also to the emcc core standards so we'll go also through the core standards one after another instead of mixing them as you cannot take them in parallel and say core competency one is reflected in the core standard number one of emcc mm doesn't really work hence we finish the round of core competencies and then we move into the emcc core standards and and so, also i think with icf we are more looking at what can you see in a recording that you submit to icf and with emcc we will be looking at um how can you structure your reflections so that you can um, demonstrate the capability indicators in your reflections. So it's it's very much, it, it's a different way of using the capabilities and competences uh, with e ICF and EMCC. So that's why we're doing the ICF first and EMCC second. Oh, yes. <laughs> we talk about coaching mindset. We talk about coaching yes. mindset today. One thing before we start that conversation is whenever you're watching this or right now or whenever later on you're watching this and you're wondering where would i read the entire competency always go to the icf website you will find the entire competency described i'll try to put it also in the comments um, underneath this recording so you can see it entirely um i would say the summary of our aim for today would be make sure that we look into what it is its coaching mindset second thing being should it show up should it not show up how should it be <laughs> reflected on a recording and what the what do we need to take into account when we look at core competency to in relation to an acc or a pcc assessment so those would be the three main buckets if you want to call it like that and hopefully you can extract some useful information so that being said kirsten can I invite you to bring a bit of a input around embodies a coaching mindset? Yes. Um, I mean, I, I think basically embodies a coaching mindset is just that. So the definition is develops and maintains a mindset that is open, curious, flexible, and client-centered. And there are kind of two parts. One is how does this open, curious, flexible, and client-centered mindset show up in a coaching conversation? And then what can you do as a coach to develop this mindset? And those are kind of the two things that you can see in this core competency. Um, you have, if, if I start with what can you actually see in a coaching recording? We have acknowledges that clients are responsible for their own choices. That's something that you will see in a coaching recording, and that is also reflected in core competency four, which is partnering with a client, and also in core competency eight, which is facilitates clients' growth. So, um, so four is presence, and um, the other is uh, facilitates client growth, acknowledges that clients are responsible for their own choices, has an impact on the coaching conversation in that the coach doesn't direct the client in air, into areas where the client doesn't want to go, that the coach gives choices about, do I want to talk about A or do I want to talk about B? How do I want to think about issues, et cetera? And um, the, the, the second part um, that you can, or that you can also see in uh, the coaching recording is number four remains aware and open to the influence of context and culture on self and others. So that you will see in active listening or listens actively, for example, that's core competency six, that you don't, the coach doesn't come in with their own assumptions about how things are, but is curious and um, makes sure that the client gets a chance to express how 
things are for them in their own culture and context, uh, rather than assuming that the coach's context is the one that's valid. Hmm. Number six is develops and maintains the ability to regulate one's emotion. Again, that's something that you would see in core competency for presence and um, also in creating awareness. That's core competency seven, where if the client is expressing strong emotion or if something happens in the coaching session where the coaches experience strong emotions that the client that the coach is able to deal with it well and by well i i mean not ignoring it but also not becoming overpowered by the emotion as to become ineffective in the coaching conversation so those would be the ones that you can see directly in the uh, in the coaching recording but they are also um evaluated under the on other coaching competencies there is uh, parts of co um, core competency two that need to show up but the evaluation is mainly through the other core competencies then the second part of it is really what do you do as a coach to develop this mindset and this has to do a lot with um, what do you do outside coaching that enables you to show up as the best coach that you can be? So things like ongoing learning and development, your reflective practice that when you had a coaching session, you, you take regular um, mo it, moments and in regular intervals in which you reflect on what happened, um, what are you learning from this, uh, where, how could you, how could you uh, serve the client even better? And uh, develop, yeah, then mentally and emotionally prepares for the sessions is another thing that you are aware of your own state of mind. You're aware, are you in a place that you can actually coach in um, and that you take appropriate measures, um, seeks help from outside sources when necessary. So when you do not feel that you are able to coach, that you take a step back and cancel coaching coaching um, sessions if, if you're not feeling like you are able to serve the client. So in the sense that the coaching mindset is really foundational for everything that we are doing. And this the description, I think, fits very well with the solution-focused approach. Open, curious, flexible, and client-centered. Mm. Um, in the solution-focused approach, one of the tenets, tenets is, one of the really basic, basic, basic um, ideas of solution focus is to try to have as little assumptions about the client as, as humanly possible. Of course, we will always assume things. I mean, we can't not assume that tomorrow the sun will uh, rise again and that, that, you know, when we step, take a step that the floor will hold and, you know, the earth won't suddenly open up. So we always have to make assumptions to, to be able to live our lives. It's just that we are trying not, in social focus, we're, we're very radical to try and not have assumptions about the client and not have assumptions about uh, a diagnosis or a classification or any kind of us pretending we know something about the client that the client doesn't know themselves. And actually that is what attracted me to the solution focused approach mm. in the beginning that, um, cause I, I'm just so allergic about when, when people put themselves a step up and mm. look down on me and say, Oh, obviously, you know, you are this and that, you know, it's just, this is literally, I'm a, I'm a very peaceful person, but this really wants to make you, makes me want to take my shoe and, you know, start hitting people. Of course I don't, but um, I, I can tell a little story when I was really like 18, 19 and um, I was involved in studying theology. And I wanted to take a course in clinical pastoral counseling. And I didn't get into the course and I didn't want to get in the course because the people who were running it were very along the lines of being analytical and it didn't fit well. But the people who actually did take this course 
we were in the same cohort, so we met in other workshops, they became strange. So instead of answering a question, they would say, yes, I can see that you have a, you have father issues, <laughs> Kirsten. And, and it's like, it, it made me really, really mad. This idea of somebody thinking they know more about me than myself. And it also leads to this knowing an expert position rather mm -hmm. than being curious, open, flexible, and client-centered. And I, I just, I can't, I can't, sorry to be dominating the conversation, but I can't stress this, stress this um, often enough that there are, there are many coaching approaches where coaches learn to have a hypothesis about the client somehow. And I don't think that's necessarily super wrong or something, but it does have the consequence or can have the consequence of the coach being less curious hmm. about the coach thinking they are an expert. And I get why this is comfortable when you're learning to coach that you, at least you know something. Hmm. You're not just hmm. a hu good human being who's asked to, hmm. who's learned to ask questions yeah. and who's, whose main contribution to the conversation is the curiosity. And it's hard to accept my contribution is that I'm curious, that I'm inviting you to explore things. If you've grown up in a system where your contribution needs to be expertise and literally giving people something, it's a big shift in mindset. But I would very much invite people to look at where in my coaching am I the opposite? Mm. Where am I closed, unflexible, um, knowing, and mm. coach-centered? And how can I move from there, possibly, to being open, curious, flexible, and client-centered? Mm. And of course, everybody tries to be that, but that's why we need ref reflective practice to see <laughs> where, uh, you know, what, what do I hold that's getting in the way? Mm hmm. I really love that part saying um, accepting that we are all humans and we all bring assumptions and we all bring things at the table. But if I take the chance and if I take the chance to reflect upon them and see also how I can go back to this embody the coaching mindset and be curious about the client. Yeah, I, I, th I think it's um, it is actually pretty radical when you look at it. Because we have to somehow accept that us being there, being curious, having learned a few good questions, that that's enough. Mm. It's enough to have this conversation. And that is very counter to the narrative that many people have been taught. In order to be valuable, mm -hmm. you have to produce something. You have to show that... you. It, and to depart from that, I guess, takes a little bit of mm, reflection, work, supervision, talking to someone who is also maybe struggling with it, but can help with their curiosity about the issue. Mm -hmm. So, granted. And I think that's also the space uh, of making sure that you would get to look at and address also in the ICF mental coaching, because I think it back, we'll look at the competences. And obviously, one way of how you can improve your practice when it comes to making sure that these competencies are being brought and lived and present in your sessions, ACC, PCC, but especially I think that this coaching mindset, is not something that you will say, oh, you need to get to MCC to be able to show them. I think it's something that needs to be present from the very beginning and just stays there with you. Maybe so that's, that's something that is the, that, that develops the most strongest between ACC and MCC. Yeah. we learned to I think we learned that part like you said we learned to accept the fact that the fact that the point that I am there as a coach and I'm present and I'm bringing my curiosity and a set of questions and what I'm doing in that moment is the best thing how I can be as a coach and I'll try doing it to support and to help the client in front of me it's a step 
it's a step that needs to sit well with everyone and have the confidence that that's more than enough. Doesn't mean that I need to show expertise and bring a million of things that the client should do and could do, and also give them a list at the end. So thank you so much. I think that was very useful to, first of all, explore what the core competency says. How would that be reflected or not reflected on what we should take into account when we talk about uh, the core competency in the sense of getting to an ICF accreditation. If there are not any questions, I've seen that we had people watching while we were talking, while we were being now live. So if you have any questions, um, reach out also after, reach out also now if you have any things. Um, I would say um, the conversation, our conversation will get definitely longer once we start next week with the core competency number three. As there, there's plenty of things to be looked at. Um, so in light of let's go and maybe do a bit of prep and reflection, you, whoever wants to get ready for next week, take a look at Core Competency 3. Bring your questions directly in, in the event. And let's see how we learn what we learn about the next Core Competency. Thank you very and much. If you want to come and join us, we have a weekly um, coaching yep. meetup and exchange that you can access at www.solutionsacademy.com slash registration. So you can join us and um, I'll be there. Chris will be there. And have one also in Romanian. So if you want to have Christina, an for language, Romanian, no, Christina, this way. I don't yeah. learn how this goes. It's like, <laughs> like this, I think. Okay, no? Christina, Not yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Romanian, Ralph, we think you'll find it something in Polish and in Spanish and um, we have a German one also. So in German one, Marie Louise intended to do one. So plenty of spaces for you to just come and talk about it. Cool. Yep. Thank you so much, Kirsten, for the time today. And thank you so much for bringing also those stories because I think they also help Build not just a word story, but a visual thing of thinking, looking at this one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you next week. Then. See you. So this is how I say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>